everyone, I'm Haley and welcome back to What the Film School. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use your cell phone to shoot a movie. You can use your film to shoot an iPhone. I've lost my phone and we're talking about phones. What I hear often from professionals in the industry and also a lot of filmmakers on YouTube is that you don't actually need a ton of fancy equipment to make a short film. So that's why I wanted to talk about cell phones today and using them to shoot movies because these are a great tool and they're at pretty much everyone's disposal. You can still use it to the best of your ability and still make something look really good. And believe me, I understand the hesitation to use a cell phone for any sort of shooting project because people do look down on them, I think. But the point here is it's not that an iPhone is much worse quality than a bigger camera. Like we all know, obviously, the more money you spend on a camera, ideally or realistically, it is going to provide you with a better quality image. But that's not to say that we should completely shut out iPhones. And from what I've seen, at least in the last few years, and especially coming out of film school, is that there's becoming more of a space and more of a platform for people shooting on iPhones now. So people in the industry might actually respect you a little bit more if you're using your iPhone creatively, if you're finding new ways to make it look good. So that's what we're gonna focus on today is how to take our iPhones, spruce things up a bit, make it look really cool, make it look really great. Now for these video purposes, I'm gonna be using my iPhone 6S, and I know I'm kind of behind in the models. I know like there's a ton of new iPhones out right now. The first thing I wanna note about this, it shoots in 4K, and if you don't know what that means, basically it's like a resolution setting. There's more pixels in the image, so everything's gonna look a little bit sharper. Most of the YouTube videos that you'll watch these days are going to be 1920 by 1080p, but something that I was noticing about my iPhone, even though it was shooting in 4K at 30 frames, per second, which is supposed to be the highest quality option. It still didn't look that great to me. And the one video that I watched that recommended using your iPhone to vlog actually suggested putting it in 60 frames per second as opposed to the 4K. And I actually found out that you can change the recording size of the videos that you're capturing right on your iPhone. In order to change this, if you don't have an iPhone, I'm sure you might be able to find similar settings on your phone as well. But basically what you do is go into settings, scroll all the way down, to camera and then right there you should see it says record video just tap on that and then it shows you the different options at which you can select and I've already covered all of those for you. And then if you scroll below, it also tells you how much space each one takes up. So this is something that's really exciting to me, and if you don't know a lot about cameras, that's okay. If all of this sounds like a complete jarbled mess, again, I'm sorry, you can skip ahead at this part. Basically, for me, looking at the different settings that I can choose from, I pick the settings that look best to my eye. So going off of this idea, I decided to shoot for a little while in 60 frames per second, and I actually just went on vacation recently to Washington, D.C. So what I ended up doing was filming all of my touristy videos and all of my videos of myself just walking around using the 60 frames per second and ultimately I really loved the quality I was getting for it and I was really surprised that it looked so good coming from my phone. Now obviously again it's not perfect it does have a little trouble adjusting to light differences and if you're shooting in low light more than likely your iPhone is still not going to be able to handle that again I'm not sure about newer settings so we've got 60 frames per second 30 frames per second we have 4k and just to toss it in there so you can see what it looks like we also have 720p. To briefly interject into this video for this next portion I was trying to demonstrate on my iPhone the different settings. I was looking at the footage and like taking little snapshots and pausing each one of the clips I had got for the different like sizes of it. And I noticed that there wasn't any visible difference. I don't know if that's just my computer, if it's my eye, if it's the camera. These are the clips I got. Take a look at them, you know, determine for yourself which one you like best. Again, I stick with the 1920 by 1080p at 60 frames per second, just because I still think that that looks the sharpest. Maybe I'm crazy, I don't know. But on the iPhone, quite frankly, I think the differences are pretty marginal. I think it mainly has to do with the recording size. But let's get back to the main video. Obviously, the higher resolution of the video, the more space it's gonna take up on your phone. So my best advice is that if you're gonna be using your phone to shoot a movie specifically, definitely clear out your phone, move stuff to the cloud if you have it on your computer, move stuff to an external hard drive so you're making space. The worst feeling is when you're out shooting something, taking pictures, taking videos, whatever it is, and your phone is all of a sudden like, boop, to fold, and then you can't do anything except delete stuff. I also wanna do a quick comparison between my phone camera and the DSLR that I'm shooting on right now. And so here's me shooting on the iPhone so you can see the difference in quality. This is just the basic setup I use for YouTube. There's nothing different. I still have my same lights going at the moment and this is relatively the similar angle that I'd be using anyway if I was shooting on my regular camera. Keep this in mind that your phone is however many hundreds of dollars for the iPhone in addition to at least upwards of a thousand dollars for a DSLR. That is quite the investment to make so if you can right now and if you're comfortable with it save yourself the money, save yourself a thousand bucks and just use your phone for now. So moving forward I think pretty much any cell phone nowadays has 
has a pretty similar lens on the camera. You can zoom in a little, you can zoom out a little, but it's pretty limiting. So what I am suggesting is buying little iPhone lenses. These things are so cute. I bought this little set of four lenses on Amazon and I'll link these down below. And basically they just clip onto my phone. So I'll do a cutaway, show you guys how to use that. But basically I can get like a wide screen, I can get super close up, I can get like macro, which is like really, really tiny. And then I can do like a fish eye as well, which is really cool for doing any kind of stylized work. Again, these are probably like the cheapest option that you'll find. There's better lenses for your iPhone that you can buy. I'll also link those down below if you're looking to spend a little bit more on this to upgrade a little bit better. But these just kind of improve your quality. They also just kind of improve the look of your film. So if you're looking to get other angles, something a little bit more visually interesting, then definitely play around with these because they're really cool. Moving right along to tripods, I do not have a tripod for my cell phone, but what I have been using for the last week or so is a selfie stick. Now I used this when I was in DC, and quite frankly, I actually really love this thing. I don't care if it makes me look like a tourist, like, uh, okay, yes, it's, it's extremely embarrassing to use this in public, but it's such a great tool. Basically this little thing sticks in the headphone jack on your phone at the bottom, and then at the top here, your phone just kind of slides in, you can adjust stick it down in there. And then mine has a little button at the bottom so I can use that to stop and start my recordings from here so I don't have to like reach up and touch it. I'm gonna show you some clips that I got of kind of the surrounding area in DC when I was sightseeing. I found that I was able to get a much smoother appearance on everything. A little bit when I was walking, if I was filming myself, it was kind of bumpy, but on the whole, just being able to have some more control over the image and be able to get something that looks a little bit more fluid was so, so much better. And this thing was, I think, less than $10. I mean, it's so affordable. It extends pretty far, so you could try to prop it up on something if you were using it as a monopod, but I really don't recommend it for that. I really recommend it if you're going to be doing the standard thing, which is just, you know, holding it out in front of you or using it kind of as like a, kind of like a, almost like a crane. And it also is adjustable so I can, you know, bend my phone whatever way I want and then extend it again as far as I, as far as I want. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it helped you, inspired you to make your own short film on your iPhone. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to me, hit the bell notification so you get notified anytime I post a video. Don't forget to check out all my social media links down below and do all that special stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys again later.